Welcome to the tribe. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. This is where we like to try to figure things out. I love theories. I love mysteries. I love discoveries. I love all of this kind of stuff. And in this video, apparently, the mystery of the Great Pyramid may have been solved by Elon Musk. Let's dive in, let's unpack. The ancient pyramids of Egypt have been the subject of mankind's fascination for centuries now. These historic masonry structures are sprinkled across the Egyptian landscape and are living proof that the ancient Egyptian civilization was way more advanced than archaeologists and historians previously thought. In the past, there have been many speculations and theories regarding how these pyramids came into being. Some of these were simple, having a logical approach that laborers built the pyramids that were designed by some incredibly talented architects. However, there are also some people who think outside of the box. A few among them have even proposed that these pyramids, especially the ones in Giza, were constructed by extraterrestrial beings. And believe it or not, the incredibly famous tech billionaire Elon Musk is among the people who believe the alien theory. According to sources, at least 118 Egyptian pyramids have been identified so far. Out of these, around 80 were built within the Kingdom of Kush that is now located in the modern country of Sudan. The ones located in modern-day Egypt were mostly built as tombs for the pharaohs and their consort during the Old and Middle Kingdom periods. The earliest known pyramids in Egypt were discovered in Saqqara, northwest of Memphis. But the most fascinating and popular pyramids around the globe are found in the Giza Pyramid Complex. This magnificent pyramid complex is also called the Giza Necropolis. It is the site on the Giza Plateau in Greater Cairo, Egypt, that includes the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Pyramid of Khafre, and the Pyramid of Menkaure and their associated pyramid complexes. The site also contains the Great Sphinx of Giza. All these structures were constructed between 2600 and 2500 BC, during the Fourth Dynasty of the Old Kingdom of Egypt, according to historians. Besides the pyramids and the Sphinx, there are also remains of many cemeteries and work of villages in the Giza necropolis. The site is present at the edges of the Western Desert, about 9 kilometers west of the River Nile in the city of Giza, whereas it lies around 13 kilometers southwest of the city center of Cairo. This entire complex, along with the nearby Memphis, was inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List back in 1979. The Great Pyramid and the Pyramid of Khafre are the two largest pyramids known to have been built in ancient Egypt, and they have gained the status of common emblems of ancient Egypt in the Western imagination over the centuries. The Giza Pyramid Complex gained the world's attention during the Hellenistic times when Antipater of Sidon listed the Great Pyramid as one of the seven wonders of the world. It is the oldest one of the ancient wonders that still exist today. Khufu's pyramid complex contains valley temples that are now buried under the village of Naslet el Saman. Archaeologists have discovered diabase paving and pneumolytic limestone walls, but they have not yet excavated this site. The valley temple was connected to a causeway, most of which was destroyed when the village was constructed. It led to the mortuary temple of Khufu. The basalt pavement is the only remaining sign of this temple. This mortuary temple was also connected to the King's Pyramid that was completed in 2560 BC. It has three smaller Queen's Pyramids and three boat pits. These boat pits actually contained a ship, and the two pits on the south side also had intact ships inside them when they were excavated. One of them was the infamous Khufu ship that has been restored and is now on display in the Grand Egyptian Museum. The Khafre Pyramid Complex consists of a Valley Temple, the Sphinx Temple, a Causeway, a Mortuary Temple, and the King's Pyramid. Inside the Valley Temple, numerous statues of Khafre were found. Many other statues were also discovered under the floor of the temple by Mariette in 1860. Khafre's pyramids were completed in 2570 BC. It looks larger than the neighboring Khufu Pyramid because of its more elevated location and the steeper angle of the inclination, but in reality, it is smaller in height and volume. This pyramid retains a prominent display of casing stones at the apex. Menkaure's Pyramid also consists of a valley temple, a causeway, a mortuary temple, and the King's Pyramid. I wish I could just, I, listen, just give me like an hour, just an hour in the past, whatever insect bug fly dragon whatever it is that they had there let me just buzz around for a little bit and just see what's happening that's all just an hour just an hour there were many statues of mankaure in the valley temple in the past a smaller anti-temple was added onto the valley temple during the fifth dynasty the mortuary temple also contained many statues of mankaure this pyramid was completed in 2510 bc and is three subsidiary pyramids 
Menkare's temple is the only one of the four main monuments in the Giza pyramid complex that does not have any of its original polished limestone casing intact. The Great Sphinx of Giza dates back to the reign of King Khafre. It is a limestone statue of a reclining sphinx facing directly from west to east. It stands on the Giza plateau on the west bank of the River Nile. Its face represents the pharaoh Khafre. According to archaeological evidence, the Great Sphinx was created by ancient Egyptians of the Old Kingdom between 2557 and 2532 BC. Queen Kentkaus I was also buried in Giza. Her tomb was named LG100 and G8400. It is located in the central area close to the Valley Temple of Menkaure. The Queen's Pyramid Complex also consists of her pyramid, a boat pit, a valley temple, and a pyramid town. The majority of the construction theories regarding the Giza pyramids are based on the idea that these were built by moving huge enormous stones from a quarry. They were supposedly dragged and lifted into place, but many experts disagree over the feasibility of this method and have proposed alternative methods by which these stones were moved and placed to atop one another. Some archaeologists have speculated that the architects back then might have developed their techniques over time. They probably selected a relatively flat part of the bedrock that functioned as a stable foundation. After careful surveys, they laid down the first level of stones and constructed the pyramids in horizontal levels, one above the other. Almost all of the stone of the Great Pyramid's interior was seemingly quarried immediately to the south of the construction site. A fine grade of limestone that was quarried across the River Nile was used for creating the smooth exterior of the pyramid. The blocks forming the exterior had to be carefully cut, were transported using a river barge, and dragged up ramps to the construction site. Seems so Just extra. a few exterior blocks are still in place at the bottom of the Great Pyramid, as most were taken away for building projects in Cairo between the 5th and 15th century. In order to maintain the symmetry of the pyramid, all its exterior casting stones were cut to be equal in height and width. The workers probably marked all the blocks to indicate the angle of the pyramid wall and then carefully trimmed the surfaces to make these blocks fit together. All three sides of the Giza pyramids were astronomically oriented to the north, south, and east, west. According to experts who argue in favor of the Orion correlation theory, this arrangement of pyramids represents the Orion constellation. This fringe theory posits the three largest pyramids of Giza and the Orion's belt of the constellation Orion are correlated and it was done intentionally by the original builders of the Giza Pyramid Complex. The stars of Orion were often associated with Osiris, the god of rebirth and afterlife in Egyptian mythology. However, Ed Krupp of Griffith Observatory Los Angeles and Tony Farrell of the University of Cape Town, South Africa, independently investigated the claims posed by Robert Boval, Graham Hancock, Anthony West, and other authors who argued in favor of the Orion correlation theory. Their critical analysis poked holes in this theory mainly on the basis of the less than ideal angle between the alignment of Orion's belt and north during the era cited by Hancock, Boval, and other supporters of the Orion correlation theory. Another incredibly far-fetched theory about the construction of the Giza pyramids was shared by Elon Musk back in 2020. He may be the richest man on Earth, but some of his controversial opinions and moves have made people consider that he may not be the smartest. The Tesla CEO and rookie Twitter owner angered the Egyptians by a bizarre claim he made in a tweet. Musk wrote in his tweet that the Great Pyramids of Giza were obviously built by aliens. As expected, the tweet went viral and an army of critics turned towards him. The outlandish claim garnered him a lot of criticism from netizens who were baffled by a man of science and technology propagating such silly conspiracy theories. So here's the thing. I feel like Elon is actually extremely smart, but he's not smart in all areas. Just being intelligent in certain areas doesn't make you intelligent all around. It doesn't mean that you're socially intelligent. It, like, there's a lot of different intelligences that you could technically have. And I also feel like he just trolls a lot. Like, he's probably like the richest troll in the world. To be honest, International Cooperation Minister of Egypt was hell-bent on not letting aliens take credit for the hard work and efforts of ancient Egyptians who put their sweat and blood in the construction of the colossal structures. By the way, someone's going to throw shots at me. I'm going to name the title. So here's the thing, real quick. I just want anybody that's here, just, just for future reference, and obviously not everybody's going to watch this video that sees my channel, but a lot of times when I watch these videos, I try not to take the exact title that they use, but I, I give a rendition of it using some similar keywords because it helps it get pushed in the algorithm, get recommended off of the main channel, um, you know, or the main video, I should say, and so on and so forth. But sometimes people get upset because like I take renditions of the title and yes, sometimes the title, 
I feel like when it comes to these kind of things, discoveries, space stuff, a lot of the titles are probably the most misleading titles on YouTube. And and it's not always in a bad way. Sometimes it's in fun ways and, you know, and, and, it, and it kind of does allude to what's actually being talked about, but it could be a little extra to kind of get you to come in and, and, and find out. And I totally get that. And I don't do it purposely. It's just that every video I watch like it's doing the same thing to me, you know what I'm saying? And I, I still enjoy it and stuff and I take for it for what I can, but some people do get upset. I've had some comments where people are like, titled at this, you lied to us or why, the, you know, like this is dumb. And and I'm like, listen, I'm it's, it's based on the videos that I'm watching. Like I am not creating these videos. I'm not creating the titles. I'm taking them from them and just adjusting it. But again, keeping similar keywords helps me get the recommendations and stuff like that so I can get my channel seen and grown and stuff like that um, as we do some of this transformative work. So. Just wanted to explain that in case anybody was curious, because this one says the mystery of the great period has just been solved by Elon Musk. But I'm assuming that this entire title is based on him just tweeting that it must be aliens. So someone's going to comment if I put him in my title and be like, what are you talking about? Now, you know, now, you know, it's, you know, but at the same time, we're still learning and understanding some stuff and we're, we may gain some information. So it's still a fun video, you know, and if it was all based around that tweet and stuff, that'd be a little bit weird, but. You know. Rania Al Mashat replied to Musk's tweet that was retweeted almost 84,000 times. She wrote, I follow your work with a lot of admiration. I invite you and SpaceX to explore the writings about how the pyramids were built and also to check out the tombs of the pyramid builders. Mr. Musk, we are waiting for you. It wasn't quite clear whether the tech billionaire was serious <laughs> or just trying to be sarcastic. But most archaeologists believe that the tombs of the pyramids construction workers discovered in the 1990s are definitive proof that the magnificent structures were built by the ancient Egyptian citizens and not some advanced aliens who landed on Earth in their silvery saucers. And I will say it's more likely that it was us. Again, I am a super, I want aliens to be a thing as far as they, they visited us, all this and that. I believe there's life out there, I would assume, because it's just so vast. There's got to be something. Whether or not they're advanced enough to reach us, you know, that's a whole nother story or whether they're advanced enough to even be on the same level as us or if they're just small bacterial life. I don't know. But it is more likely that they, we just figured something out back then. I'm 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 a firm believer of advanced technologies in the past, advanced civilizations um, that we maybe advanced certain things like stonework and such that maybe in ways that we've never done in our time, because maybe in our time before we got to that point, we started to go into these different ages like the Bronze Age or the you know what I'm saying? And things just didn't need to go that direction. So we never further figured stuff out, whereas maybe they just, you know, th that was the option that they had. So they became the biggest, greatest masters of that specific field. You know what I mean? Like, does that make sense? I think so. Zahi so. Hawass, an Egyptian archaeologist, responded to Elon's tweet by making a short video in Arabic that he posted on social media. In the video, he claimed that Elon Musk's argument was a complete and utter hallucination. He also said, I found the tombs of the pyramid builders that tell everyone that the builders of the pyramids are Egyptians and they were not slaves. Elon Musk did later tweet a link to a BBC history site about the lives of the pyramid construction workers. He also wrote, this BBC article provided a sensible summary for how it was done. This calmed the horrified Twitter users a little bit, who realized that like many of his tweets, this one was also just an erratic musing by the quirky billionaire. The work of quarrying, moving, setting, and sculpting the huge number of stones used to build the pyramids was indeed carried out by several thousand skilled ancient Egyptian workers, unskilled laborers, and supporting workers. Many bakers, carpenters, water carriers, and people having other necessary skills also contributed to the project. There is wide speculation about the exact number or workers needed for construction of such a massive project. On his visit to Giza in 450 BC, Greek historian Herodotus was informed by the Egyptian priests that the Great Pyramid had taken 400,000 men to build, working Ooh. in three-month shifts of 100,000 men at a time. It's impressive to think that you could get that many people to work together and functionally. However, evidence from the tomb suggests that a workforce of 10,000 laborers working in three-month shifts okay. took about 30 years to build a single pyramid. That's crazy. Outside the large stone wall surrounding the Giza pyramid complex, Mark Lena and his team found a town where the pyramid workers used to live. So real quick, well, I apologize, I keep pausing, but if it took them 30 years to build it, my thing is back then, what was the, what was the life expectancy of people? Because it wasn't like they lived to 70, 80, 90 years back then. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you worked on this for 30 years, that was essentially like your entire life. Like you worked from the point that you were able to actually do it to the point you pretty much were just like, all right, well, last couple of years of my, my being. Unless I'm wrong, maybe they lived to the 50s back then. I don't know. But I feel like they, they died pretty young back then. 
Like even the priests, the or the, even the um, the the pharaohs and stuff. There was a lot of young pharaohs and, and ones that died at pretty young ages. Situated southeast of the Carfre and Mancare complexes, in this workers' village, archaeologists discovered communal sleeping quarters, bakeries, breweries, kitchens, a hospital, and even a cemetery. This town dates back to the fourth dynasty between 2520 to 2472 BC. This was after the accepted time of Khufu and completion of the Great Pyramid. According to Lena and the Era team, the development of this urban complex must have been quite rapid. All of the construction probably happened in the 30 to 50 years that spanned the reigns of Khafre and Menkaure, builders of the second and third pyramids. The pottery shards, seal impressions, and stratigraphy were used to date the site by the team. From their analysis, the researchers concluded that this was some of the world's earliest planned urban settlements that securely dates to the regions of two Giza pyramid builders, Khafre and Menkaure. The Great Pyramids of Giza are colossal structures that keep baffling archaeologists and historians with the mysterious secrets they hold inside and the mind-boggling level of precision found in their construction. These pyramids are not just evidence that the ancient Egyptians were capable of sophisticated construction. In fact, the detailed studies of these pyramids have revealed that the Egyptians of the Old Kingdom were beyond intelligent. They possessed a vast pool of knowledge. They had some impressive tools and an unbelievable expertise in the field of engineering. It's hard to imagine how these insanely heavy structures came into being. That actually is another thing that I don't think we consider, right? Because we think, okay, back then till now, we've evolved, we've become so much you know more intelligent about things our technology is advanced but in all reality when it comes to say like the brain size the evolution of us biologically as humans did we evolve like because i think that i think that a lot of, and i could be wrong comment below if you've ever thought about this maybe people don't even think about it but i think that some people just assume that we're more intelligent now than we were back then like if you just take all our technology away just base level brain versus brain we're more intelligent now because it's so many years further and i think that it's just like a pedestal thing we see us we're, we're doing all these things that they didn't do back then so we must be but in all reality their brain size was probably the same as ours like once we reached a certain point like how much has our brain really grown over the years so if they had the same capabilities brain wise as us back then just didn't have the technology there's no reason they couldn't figure out all sorts of things and solutions and stuff no different than we do now when we come across stuff in our life and, and, and overcome obstacles. They just maybe found different ways to do it that we, again, never had to figure out in our time because we moved past it or went into different directions. It's just, I don't know, stuff like that. Comment below. I'm curious how people feel about that because I would assume that someone back then is just as intelligent as, as us now. We've just learned more because we have schools set up. We have, we have a, a different structure set up. But as far as our brain's capacity to learn and stuff, it was probably the same. The, the same creativity, the same ability to overcome stuff, the same problem solving. I would assume. Archaeologists have been trying to find out what sort of tools the ancient Egyptians used for construction. After all, it wasn't possible to build these gigantic pyramids without the help of some incredibly handy state-of-the-art tools. It's no secret that. And that's not all. Analysis of the pyramids has confused archaeologists further because the precision of these structures and the mathematical accuracy is as futuristic as the tools and construction methods employed in building them. This level of accurate calculation proves the ancient Egyptians were far ahead of their time and all the structures they built were well thought out. The pyramids are much more than just an architectural wonder. Some even believe that the Giza pyramids are among the first ever engineering marvels known in history. Every aspect of the pyramids, including their location, holds a hidden meaning. Now experts have revealed that the geographical placement of the pyramids is also scientifically significant. Experts have been trying to unravel the deepest, darkest secrets of the Egyptian pyramids for hundreds of years, yet there's a lot that still remains hidden from the archaeologists even today. Modern scientists have confessed that the Giza pyramids are not only perplexing for historians and engineers, but for physicists as well. Along with the geographical, constructional and mathematical planning, experts have also discovered that the pyramids were built keeping in mind the principles of thermodynamics too. The rock arrangements of these pyramids have kept archaeologists and engineers up at night for years. Nothing about them is simple or primitive, and it's nearly impossible to fathom the perfection with which these were put together to form the massive pyramids. Another mystery of the Egyptian pyramids modern archaeologists and historians are unable to resolve is the construction of the swivel doors guarding the entrance of the Pyramid of Khufu. 
After all, these pyramids house the remains of some of the most important ancient Egyptian kings and their precious belongings. Believe it or not, but what lies inside these pyramids is even more fascinating than their outside glory. Besides the chambers filled with ancient artifacts, sarcophaguses, and scrolls, the hidden tunnels inside these pyramids also attract hundreds of thousands of tourists every year. While the ancient Egyptians adhered to the principles of trigonometry, astronomy, and engineering, they also kept in mind their spiritual affiliations. Scientists are often quick to forget that the ancient Egyptian civilization worshipped several different gods and also dealt in curses. The pyramids of Egypt are no doubt considered among some of the most beloved archaeological sites today, but this wasn't always the case. Certain kings from the old days tried their level best to eradicate these magnificent structures from the face of the earth, but fortunately they were not entirely successful. Experts are hopeful that with newer technology and further detailed studies, they might be able to figure out the complex and evasive secrets of the Egyptian pyramids in the near future. But for now, they can only marvel at the challenge that is the ancient Egyptian civilization. Okay, that was I, I I enjoyed that video. A lot of lot of things came up. A lot of ooh, I like that. I have a question though. Anybody in the comments that happens to come across this video, have you ever visited the pyramids? I don't know that I've ever known anybody that's visited the pyramids. I would love to go there someday. Hopefully, listen. Maybe this, like I said again before, if this channel grows, my YouTube channel's doing well, I start making some money. I buy tickets. We start doing a little like vlog videos every once in a while outside of these reactions, where I actually go and check some of these places out. That would be amazing. But let me not think too far ahead. That, regardless, I'm going to try to go there some point in my life because I just feel like I need to experience seeing the pyramids in person. I feel like I need that in my life. But comment below. Let me know what you guys think or if you guys would love to do that as, as well sometime. Um, yeah, if you're new here and you enjoyed these videos, all I ever ask in return, smash that like button, hit that subscribe so that way I can continue to give you the content every single day. With that said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take it easy. Stay safe. I'll catch you next video, homies.